You sent <laughs> find everything here. Hold on a second. Which is so we have, uh, I think, two agenda items. The first is, um, you know, after the TSC meeting last week at the close of the uh, of the hackathon of face to face, uh, hosted by JP Morgan Chase, um, I promised to bring together a proposal to write up exactly what I was trying to explain. Um, uh, on the previous TSC so that everybody understood what we were um, deciding. And then um, uh, we'll follow the discussion of that and hopefully uh, approval of that proposal um, with a discussion from a tooling perspective. An insight from the, the foundation's um, uh, infrastructure staff uh, that manage a lot of the other projects um, as to what you know what the best configuration will be for for setting all up. So what happened? Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Hello. Yes. Oh, you can. Okay. It, it it sounded like the Bluetooth speaker was cutting out. It's good. Okay. So any other business? Any other agenda items? people want to bring up. Um, if, if we have time, I suppose we could actually talk about the, uh, <clears throat> the project life cycle and, um, and the, the template proposals that are still out there. Uh, and, uh, and some of the comments in the, in the proposal sort of suggest that maybe we should conclude that uh, piece of business. Um, but uh, let, let's see you know, where we get, I guess. Okay. All right. So, um, so it, does everybody have a, a copy or a link to the proposal? Hopefully. And um, we can. What we can do is we can go through the proposal, and then we can also go through some of the comments that that uh, people have made, and I, I tried to address them. So essentially, what we're proposing here is to. Um, you know, formally incubate the, the merge code base that emerged out of uh, the hackathon uh, last week, um, uh, and and formally evaluate that through the incubation process. You know, maturing it, getting it to a point where we know it builds and we can follow a release uh, with it. Um, the, the project is sponsored uh, by myself and Tomas from Digital Assets. Um, and again, the proposal is that we create this merge repository of the IBM and digital assets contributions based on the, the output of the, the hackathon. Evaluation by the, the technical steering um, uh, upon a request for graduation from, from incubation. Um, so again, you know, from, from a context perspective, you know, we, uh, agreed to you know to try and, uh, an experiment um, you know based on the joint proposal that IBM and digital assets had pr uh, proposed back at the uh, February 25th uh, Tesco steering uh, we agreed that we would uh, you know move that forward with uh, the hackathon and so forth and, and we did that and um, and we were able to successfully get um, uh, if you will a proof of concept uh, out of that hackathon um, we have links there to the um, uh, to the details of what the team was able to achieve. Actually, it was teams because there was really two teams that came together to do this, um, and a number of individuals from a, a number of different companies. And um, a copy of the merge code base is linked as well. Um, and so, again, the, the motivation is that, you know, following the, the hackathon, there was, I think, a lot of energy in the room to keep going. Um, and uh, so the team had proposed a number of high level next steps. Uh, they're articulated there in the proposal. Um, and then uh, along with another set of steps that are another set of tasks that are necessary to get us to the point where we have uh, a mature implementation that we could you know, bring forward for evaluation. Um, again, this is proposed as an incubation project. Uh, I think there was a question from uh, Patrick in Slack about you know, whether or not um, 
uh, other projects could be put forward and proposed for incubation? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, this is not exclusive. This is uh, inclusive. Um, if others have proposals, then uh, I think we should um, bring them forward and, and, and consider them uh, at the technical steering. Um, in terms of the resources, uh, IBM and digital assets are both committing full-time resources um, uh, to this effort. Um, and uh, we're proposing that uh, Bin, Tomash, uh, Robert, and Sheehan um, be the initial set of maintainers. And, and those, those guys, again, per the, the governance, um, they'll uh, uh, be the ones that are tasked with reviewing uh, patches before they're merged. Uh, and um, uh, you know, over time, hopefully uh, bringing on additional committers um, that can that can join and and help in in, in that process. Again, you know, uh, in, in most source process uh, projects, everybody can review and 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 uh, comment, make suggestions um, uh, on on pull requests that are made. Um, uh, but the the maintainers are the ones initially that will have the review, the the ability to actually merge the code, and they can also uh, bring others on board to the project. Um, to join them as uh, reviewers and people that have the authority to uh, authorize a merge. Um, uh, how we go about doing this, we would establish a single repository under the hyperledger GitHub org um, with the merge code base that we created at the face-to-face, -face, uh, clearly labeled a readme uh, that it's an incubation proje uh, project, um, and then uh, that would essentially allow us to, to move forward. And we could also, you know, start working on things like the continuous integration. We'll talk about that with Stephen a little bit later. Um, so before I get into the comments in the in the margin, uh, any questions, comments, concerns? Yes, Stefan here. Um, Chris, would you see that as a, an effort driven by DAH and IBM, or would you rather see a more more of the community community participating in this initial effort? Um, I don't see this as being an IBM and digital assets project. I see this as being a Hyperledger project. If, if so, um, we just tried to install the, the, the code as well, and we also found what we found last week that's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. And last week we said it should be in 101 on how to basically install the, the whole code. Right. And also, if you want to bring on more people, could we establish a set of documentation or a set of guidelines that people understand the code who are not part of the core team prior to kicking off this this um, pro uh, project so that we can pull in more people from the outside? Well, I think we can certainly put that as a priority for the first steps, but I wouldn't want to necessarily make it a prerequisite to getting going because we, we, I mean, we have to bring the code in and put it under the, the governance and, um, uh, and, and you know, integrate the various tools and so forth for, for continuous, continuous integration to happen. So I, I, I definitely agree with that, Stefan, that we need to, to clean that up, make it a lot more accessible. Yeah. Uh, and that definitely I mean, should for, be a priority. Yep. For me, that's a prerequisite of getting more people on board who are not part of the core team. And it depends on how quickly we want to achieve that. The priority of documentation and this how-to guide um, has to be set. All right. So we could add um, initial next steps to do that. Good first project for, for, for first task for the project. All right. Let me just edit the. Oops. Come on. Oh. Hey, uh, okay. uh, hey, hey, Chris. This is Morali from DDCC. I think yeah. along with that, along with the, um, along with what was suggested, I think what would be good is to have a current architecture of, you know, both these tags. I think we have seen a high-level architecture, but more a more a deep level, you know, a, a, a more detailed design of both these tags. And what are we shooting for when we merge it together? The, uh, you know, the, the um, in terms of the future stack, how it's going to look like, and also the functional. You know, what are the two functional aspects from a functional perspective? What does OBC bring in? What does, um, you know, what does, uh, uh, you know, what, what does the other party bring in? And you know how do they complement each other? That'll also help us for somebody new to both the stacks. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree with that. 
Thanks, Merle. Yep, totally agree. Mm -hmm. This is this is Christopher Allen. I brought up some comments in the chat um, uh, box. Um, if you're whenever if you want to talk about that. Yeah, we, we we will go through. Yeah, we will go through the margins. As I said, I just wanted to sort of ask you invite others to to comment that hadn't already done so in the margin. We would definitely go through those. Could you clarify the number of stages that are involved? So you mentioned this this project going to an incubation status and then uh, presumably right. downstream from there. Right. So we we had uh, previously discussed uh, a project lifecycle that starts with a proposal to incubate a project. Um, and then, you know, that's followed by a period of maturation uh, once the uh, the project is, uh, what did I say, um, in the margin. It's actually, there was a comment in the margin that, that sort of articulated my response to that. Um, yeah, so there's a, uh, Chris Chris Allen had, had put in a comment, um, what exactly does incubation really mean? And I linked the, uh, uh, the wiki where the, the, the project lifecycle document is um, posted, and again, that um, that that process involves uh, uh, you know this incubation stage where um, uh, you know again the project is matured, and when the the team feels confident that they want to request that the project be um, graduated from incubation, uh, that you know they need to have a fully functional code base. It needs to have test coverage commensurate with other projects. Again, we'll have to decide what you know uh, sufficient test coverage is um, for the initial one. Um, have an active and diverse community of developers. So again, we want to we want this to be a project of the Hyperledger uh, project itself, not of any one or any two vendors. Um, and we want to have a history of releases that demonstrate that the team knows how to go through and 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 do a release of that project. And that may be you know that they're they're integrated with the release. Um, if you re if you take a look at the um, the lifecycle document, you'll see that, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, if somebody's proposing a whole new, wholly new comp, uh, component that may need to be independent um, until such time we can, uh, we can merge it. If you're just adding a, a smaller feature, then you would do that, but you would do it with feature flags and so forth that could be disabled. Um, so, so again, the, you know, the, the intention here is we would go through that process, eventually graduate it to a mature project, and then finally, um, you know, there's sort of an end of life uh, process uh, where we would go through when we, we may deprecate a project if uh, we deem that it's no longer relevant um, and, and go through a, a period of deprecation and then that would be followed by end of life. So that's, that's roughly what the, uh, the, the process life cycle is. And then again, that's been proposed. I, I, you know, when we, when we had the initial discussion um, of the life cycle document, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of uh, disagreement with that. In fact, I don't recall any. All right, let's let's uh, let's actually go through. So we covered that comment. Uh, let's go through the margin then. Um, see your so the first one is see your comment about hacks below. Um, um it's also in the chat room on the side. It, um, um, it's in both places. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the put, chat. Chris is putting stuff in the chat as well. Oh, okay, thanks. The Slack or the Google chat? Okay. No, they go to meeting chat. Oh, they go to meeting chat. Yeah, and so <laughs> the joys um, of having multiple tools. <laughs> yeah, I apologize, and I can move my comments to the appropriate place. I mean, just in summary, um, you know, I feel like we were invited to a hackathon. I love hackathons. I've been running or just hackathons for, you know, 20 years. Uh, they're great for, um, you know, information sharing. They're great for, you know, uh, trying different ideas, lots of freedom to fail, uh, you know, proving some concepts and whatever. Um, my problem is 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 this word incubation and and looking at the life cycle document about the the uh, you know calling the, this hack a something that is a baby that we're that the next step is to make it mature <laughs> after this one and it just feels uh, premature premature it's it's really not architected to allow 
easy contribution by others. There's a lot of architecture things in regards to like um, membership services from top to bottom that, you know, a lot of engineers we were talking to were kind of going, yeah, you know, some of these ideas of, of having a different architecture that allows for, um, you know, say, uh, um, the uh, uh, J.P. Morgan uh, uh, contribution to, to be at the top, but use IBMs at the, at the bottom. A lot of those types of things are not easily, I mean, they're, they're really kind of hard baked into this, uh, into this proposal. And I was, you know, looking at the life cycle document and it says, you know, proposals really need to be, uh, you know, vendor neutral. And I'm, you know, this, this was a hack. It was great. Let's, let's move it to the GitHub. Let's, uh, you know, continue to experiment with it, turn it into a real proposal, but, but it, it doesn't have, a, it doesn't meet the, it has to be a proposal first before you can incubate it. Um, We're looking at proposal first. I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to understand what you think it is if it doesn't go in incubation. Almost every open source group that I'm familiar with has the first step is an incubation. And it could start with nothing more than a blueprint. I, that's what they do at OpenStack. They start with essentially an outline of what they want to do. Yeah. And on, on, so, on, on so the proposal started in February. The, this proposal was uh, presented to the community in February. It's been six weeks now. Mm -hmm. So you know, Chris, I I I don't know way, I, I don't know how long. And I, so I think the proposal was for the hackathon, not for the the topic exactly. we're talking about now. Yeah, it's for a very different thing. Yeah, fair fair enough. But I mean, I, again, I, I guess I'm struggling with exactly what we would call it and how we would. It's post a proposal. It. It's a it's a proposal. <laughs> And, and I, I would like to see that the was, I also think that the proposal was made. Stefan, I think you're cutting out, or I don't know if we're on. We're somebody's cutting out. There was a body discussion of the document and uh, the code. Could, so I, I don't know what I would call proposal if that wasn't a proposal. And now moved on and worked on this proposal during the hackathon to create something that I would call is something that is incubating. So I, I don't see the point. It, this is Mike Dolan. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Hi, Mike. Hi. Yeah. So at the LF, we host over 40 projects. Incubation state is very common in our projects. It is a very low barrier for people to get code into the repo, start working on it on a proposal that fits the scope of the project. And this should not be something where we're gating and throwing a whole bunch of barriers up for people to contribute and create ideas and start working on it together. Right now we have this weird state where people are trying to work on these off the normal, uh, you know, <laughs> GitHub in these mm -hmm. extra repos where you can't just, tr you can't just transfer this stuff over later. And so, you know, this is, this is different from a standards effort, which is what I think some of these comments are sounding like, as though this is some sort of standardization effort. And that's not what we're doing here. Um, you know, it, and others are free to bring proposals too. It, it, this, isn't, this is a very odd discussion for, you know, what we normally do in all of our other projects. And, and I not, it's not just Linux Foundation projects, OpenStack, any any major open source project I'm aware of, this is this is going in a very different direction. So I think this is mostly a matter of semantics. When I come back, this is. Uh, hold on, uh, Hart was just talking, yeah, and maybe fine. we need to go ahead. Sorry, I think this is just a matter of semantics. I agree with Chris that we should make an effort to uh, make the code easier to use and easier to to work on and that we shouldn't be necessarily wedded to a particular architecture. You know, there may have to be big architectural changes if we discover that, you know, something, something doesn't work with what we want for the vision of the project. But I think, uh, I guess most of this is just semantics. You know, what's, you know, we, I think we all agree on what we need to do. It's just what we're arguing about. Does that make It makes it so I yeah, at this point. Nick was next in the queue. Yeah. So 
Um, let me just express a couple of my concerns um, about it. One is, um, uh, and, and I think this has been addressed in the, in the one um, comment that you had in the proposal section of the proposal, which is um, uh, this is not the code base we're proposing. This is a code base that will be evaluated formally at some point in time. Um, that's correct. That will be adopted as a basis. Okay, that that's that's number one, and I'm real happy to understand that that um, that there will be an evaluation process. Leading to that, though, I would feel a lot more comfortable understanding um, uh, a little bit more about what that evaluation will entail, um, and ensure that we've got a parallel effort that is uh, equally aggressively being pushed um, to establish the evaluation criteria um, uh, for what we're doing. Um, I think the third thing, and, and this is one where I'm going to come back and, and uh, echo what I heard Chris saying a couple of minutes ago, is um, it, it, it feels like the proposal is code as a, code without a, an understanding of exactly what it is is being proposed. Um, uh, the architectural specifications we're given is extremely high level, especially on some things like the membership services, which is where I have my greatest heartburn is in that area right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to understand more about what work and, and how those components are going to be uh, uh, deployed, made available, who runs them, what the expectations are on that. So there are, there are some questions about exactly what it is, I think, that, that is being proposed architecturally. And as I have said multiple times, um, I'm all in favor of in parallel making code work. Um, so, you know, there's nothing quite like having the code as a way of making concrete discussions. Um, yes. I'm just, I'm really uncomfortable about going code without having some idea of what it is I'm actually coding. Right. So we have a parallel piece of work to do to gather the use cases and requirements. Um, there were a number that were, you know, part of what um, we had initially proposed, the sort of the, the combination of the, uh, what IBM had proposed with a combination of the paper and so forth to articulate some of that. Uh, clearly, there is more needed to be done in that space. I totally agree with that, Mick. Um, and, and to your point on, you know, sort of we should aggressively work on, uh, you know, evaluation criteria and so forth, I'm, I'm, I fully agree with that. I'm, and, and, and in fact, um, you know, we can we can make that part of the, you know, um, you know, part of the bargain, if you will, part of. But uh, you know, I, again, as Mike said, you know, the, the point is that you know we need to get code into the Hyperledger project that we can all start collaborating on. I realize that you know it may be a little bit awkward to get it up and running initially. We have to work on that. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, that's I think the nature of open source is you have to make it accessible to others to contribute and collaborate. Um, and, and that's, I think, what we intend here. This is not, uh, again, it's not a foregone conclusion that, you know, if somebody else has a better idea or wants to make another uh, competing proposal that we would incubate side by side, I'm happy to do that as well. Can I? Um, uh, go ahead. Hi, this is uh, Stan Lieberman, see me. Uh, given the, uh, that I guess part of the question is what are we accepting and uh, maybe as an option we can look at accepting parts of the architecture and maybe break it up uh, into separate projects because right now what we're talking about is accepting the basically the entire OBC architecture right. as the Hyperledger architecture. No, we're not. Be, well, uh, but, as a proposal, as a proposed uh, uh, implementation. No? But I mean, again, it's an incubator. It's a place to start from. It's not the end result. Right. But part of the uh, uh, yes, uh, concern is what are we accepting? So maybe accepting portions of the uh, architecture. So for example, the membership services, just in this example, yeah. maybe that can be broken, uh, broken out into a separate project. I don't know how feasible that is from the technical side but maybe it could be accepted into incubation piecemeal versus the entirety.
So, so Richard here from, from R3, so I've, I've been listening and it, it's interesting, a couple of thoughts have crystallised listening in particular to, to Mick and, and, and Christopher, so Christopher Allen speaking. I've, I've been uncomfortable for, for some weeks now and not, not quite been able to put my finger on why. Um, and I think part of it is because I've been struggling to, to understand how, how to contribute to this process. And, and as I hear the discussion, I, th I think the, the thing that's becoming clear to me is um, I think I need far more clarity, and uh, maybe this was discussed last week, and apologies, I couldn't be there, far more clarity on what we think the an end state could be. Um, I, I've argued for some time that I, I, I disagree fundamentally with the idea that there will ever be one correct code base for distributed ledgers or, or, or for blockchains. Um, there will be different appropriate architectures for different requirements. Um, that's just um, self-evident after any amount of requirements analysis. So I've been un uncomfortable, and, and I made this clear at the you know the initial kickoff that the idea of Linux Foundation effort trying to select one code base, regardless of what it is. Um, would only make sense if we had a really clear view of what problem it was we were trying to solve. So almost like so, the first, and, and the only thing we should do is say, right, this is the problem we're going to solve, and now let's, let's, let's figure it out. Um, so, so Richard, what I'm trying, just, 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 to finish, just to finish that off, just, um, so, so if, if the vision or the intention is at some point we get to a single code base, then the, the utmost priority is, is, is to agree as a TSC and a broader community about you know, what is the problem we think we're trying to solve, um, you know, independent even of detailed requirements or, or any architectures. Or if the, if the vision is we actually think there will be several um, you know, sister projects all under the Hyperledger banner, um, each addressing different needs, um, then that's also a plausible outcome. And it's probably one I'd favor, although I, I don't have a strong view on it. But if that's the case, then when we talk about things like you know, evaluation processes, um, we need to be clear about that up front because the outcome then isn't which code base or which code bases get merged and selected. It's of the universe of possible code bases, which ones, plural, do we think are most appropriate for the different use cases we've identified? But they're two very, two very different questions. And I, 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 unless it was resolved last week, I think it's something to address um, soon. Otherwise, I, I struggle to I struggle to engage meaningfully with, with the code because um, you know, I don't know what problem it's trying to solve. So, so Richard, let me let me clarify something because I think there's, and again, I think to Hart's point earlier, I think we have a problem of semantics, and we're talking a little bit past each other here. We are not selecting a code base. We're collectively a community that is coming together to develop. We're going to develop a hyperledger, you know, whatever that, you know, whatever we decide that it needs to be, right? With requirements and use cases, that will, that will shape what we build. It's useful to sometimes start with a lump of clay that you can evolve into what we want to build. We are not selecting a code base. We are not selecting an answer. We're just, at, at this point, we're just trying to start a process of getting people collaborating and working together. To de actually develop something. We're not looking to evaluate the answer to something at this point. We just need to get started doing mm -hmm. open source development. So I think, you know, for, for, you know if, if there's concern that we're somehow or other pre-anointing what the end state is, we're not. Not at all. But we are trying to get to a point, I think, to Mike's, uh, to Mike Dolan's uh, discussion, where we actually have something we can work with, a piece of clay that we can start working with. So I don't disagree with any of that, and, and I'm not, and, and I, I totally agree with the need to to make progress. Um, you know, it's it, it, it's very easy, and I and I am I, I want to make sure I'm not guilty of this of being the person who sits there sniping rather than contributing. So I'm I'm very I'm very conscious of that. Um, but the reason I raise it is um, a a perfectly valid alternative and maybe superior or again i don't have a strong view on this is to say well actually you know what um let's let's take obc and and, and a bit of proof because they're the, you know, the the two code bases under discussion they're both fine pieces of code both i think solve designed to solve um or address different problems um mm. it's not obvious to me why we're trying to to merge them when actually they they could both as they stand be 
perfectly valid code bases that both independently form the basis of, 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 of sister projects under the Hyperledger banner. So one with the UTXO model, Bitcoin aligned, one that's you know Ethereum inspired. Um, it's not obvious to me. So, so there could be there could be code working on in parallel with both of them, and the effort could be to you know to to improve them and understand them. It's not obvious to me why we think we need to merge them. Maybe we do, but that point has to be. And, and apologies if I've missed it. But that point has to be argued. Yeah. Well, hey, um, hey, uh, yeah, um, hey, Chris, this is Morali. Just as a suggestion, you know, again, this is just a suggestion. I'm in favor of merging the code bases, but maybe this will help, right? Maybe if we come up with a target architecture, you know, for the hyperledger and then identify the different components. And as part of this proposal, you say that, you know, this proposal is bringing up, you know, these components from the OBC and these components from hyperledger. So that'll set a template for any other anybody else proposing it, they will have to identify what components of that target end state, you know, are we are we proposing there? Will that help? Just a suggestion. So, so if I if I understood you correctly, I mean, I think that's exactly how we work going forward. That's, you know, other people are going to come forward with an idea about improving the membership services or having a better membership services and they want to bring a proposal forward with maybe some code or maybe just an idea and incubate a project to do that that's why that that's that's exactly what we want to do and so okay. you know, i mean i mean I, again I, I think it's important to sort of to, to to think about this not as that this is the answer but that it's just a lump of clay that we can evolve to be what we think it needs to be if, if I can add from some of the other Linux Foundation projects, uh, manage a couple others. Yeah. The, the, look, if, if you have another idea, put another project proposal up and put it forward. This is this is a, this is a, a all about at the end of the day. If you if that's you right. get more people to come over and do a project, and your project will grow faster. And that's how we get innovation, right? Just people trying things out. We see this. Uh, I, I see this on a lot of the projects that I'm involved in. Yeah. You, you get competing ideas, which isn't bad. People try them out, experiment, compare. Sometimes they merge. Sometimes they die off. <coughs> right. I mean, you, you take a look at you know some of the ways that uh, this happens. Certainly, you know, if I think about OpenStack, you know, if somebody has a better idea for how they want to you know maybe refactor some component or add in a new feature, they take a fork. They start working on it. They get others to collaborate with them. You know, they keep it current with the base, you know, with the trunk. And then when they get to a point that they're ready to share that, they, you know, either request it be incubated or if they've already done that, they request it be merged in with the, the base code. That's, that's really what this is all about. So, uh, you know, I mean, again, it, it's, you know, I, I think, if, if, if there's concern that somehow or other this is only IBM and digital assets, then I think we have to dispel that right away. That's not what this is about. Um, I, right. I think something that would help in that vein is looking at it less as this is a lump, this is the single lump of, of uh, clay that uh, innovation emerges from, and this is one of several different lumps of clay. So I think just in, in the verbiage of the proposal, if it's clear that you know this is one project being moved into incubation, but it's not intended to be the foundation. That's right. Um, so we can bring in other base um, blockchains to work with. Sure, absolutely. I think, I mean, again, and I think, you know, to Phil's point, uh, you know, you have to vote. You know, somebody's actually got to make another proposal. And at least to date, I don't think that's happened. I mean, there has been, other, you know, other, you know, there was, uh, you know, initial code bases that were brought forward. Um, and, uh, you know, I think they need to be, um, uh, you know, if, if that's truly something we want to do and they want to apply for incubation, then we should do that. Absolutely. As I really like from, from Deutsche Börse, um, we fully agree with your analogy of, of the piece of clay, but what we would like is us and others to, or help us and others to easily understand that initial piece of clay. For example, yeah. for us who runs our development efforts, took a day now or so to get the IBM code running. And, and he also could provide like the, the 101 description on how to do that. And this kind of stuff, I think, would help everybody to put the whole thing on a broader development base by documentation and, and some pieces which help people to get going. 
Yep. So I, I, I totally agree with that, Stefan, and I'd add that to the to the first, you know, it's the first step. <laughs> yeah. That's all oh, I wanted okay. to basically mark. Right. Hi, hi, this is David Vol. Um yeah, I mean it sounds I think I agree with well, I think everyone is is agreeing. <laughs> it sounds like there's a lot of violent agreement going on right now. <laughs> and that um, you know, moving this project that a lot of this is semantics and I don't see, you know, how moving this project to incubation status, you know, would would uh, conflict with anyone's points that they were raising about what should happen next and what has to happen going forward and what happens if someone else wants to, to suggest something different or, you know, in order to meet some addif additional requirement. So, I mean, again, it sounds like everyone is in a state of violent agreement right now. And uh, and that you know the proposal to move this project into incubation status uh, isn't in conflict with anyone's uh, points. So that's just my two cents. Yeah, and I I would like to add this to Sharon from IBM that there were some really fantastic ideas right at the hackathon last week that you know we were trying to encourage people to come forward with proposals to either integrate with this code base, you know, or to just bring it forward. So, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunity here for integration or for other code bases to come forward. I also would like to address what Richard raised, uh, why we did this much. Well, we as uh, uh, who, who know the individual code bases I, on IBM side and, and on the digital asset side, we both recognize that there are advantages on this merge um, because these, uh, uh, the implementation on all side is a very specific implementation um, coming from Bitcoin angle, whereas their implementation is a very generic implementation for that we will be accommodating for alternate approaches of consensus, for alt alternate uh, languages of uh, uh, smart contracts and so on. So we thought that this is a very pragmatic and, and very valuable merge that gives us an API that is accommodating to, or to the business cases that we already understand, but certainly we need to do more research about other use cases. And I think that this, this is running in parallel. And this is uh, moving this, pro this merge project into an incubating phase. I would also say, I don't see how to endanger any other progress. Chris, can I just ask a question? Um, what is the so you have uh, the the current merge code base is in a get is in a GitHub repo of its own right now, right? It, I mean, where was actually, development was taking place? I thought I remember the comments that it was that it was. It was, but I think right now it's actually still back in the IBM uh, code base for a number of reasons. Oh, okay. The, okay, the, got it. The, um, the, so really, the incubation status. It, and, and I'm just trying to be precise about what the the you know, it, it, what does accepting the proposal mean? Um, as I understand it, it means number one, we give it a label that it is a hyperledger project that's an incubation status. Two, we give it a repo on the hyper we give it a spot on the hyperledger um, banner uh, in GitHub. What else um, is it? Is there another ad additional set of trackings? What what actually change? So if we accept this, what changes? Um, well, we we bring it sort of under the hyperledger umbrella. What changes then is we can put it under the governance of the project. Um, you know, to to be honest, right? You know, the, what what they did for the hack was often in a private repository, not a private repository, it was public, but um, in in an independent uh, repository. There's no uh, you know, there's 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 nothing in that that sort of identifies this uh, and, and and puts on it you know a set of governance in terms of having to review code, putting it under. And again, we're going to talk about this with Stephen uh, in 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 a few moments. You know, putting it under Garrett so that we enforce a review process around any changes to the code base that all the code is reviewed that we can start you know engaging and accepting contributions from others. Um, and, and run it through a continuous integration delivery pipeline that is managed by Travis or Jenkins or whatever, you know, Stephen and his team recommend. Um, uh, the, All of those things. 
what, what it does is it start that. down that path of, of actually building something. And again, if others okay. want to bring forward proposals that are op operating in parallel or, uh, you know, that augment or improve upon what we start with, we, we should be doing that aggressively. I, right? I, I'm, I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just trying to, to be clear on, so um, process wise, the, the real difference is that this comes under the hyperledger label. It comes under the set of guidelines for uh, for such a code review and commitment, uh, both mm -hmm. in terms of licensing and um, uh, kind of community contribution and the rest of the things that go along with with you know what we all signed up for when we signed up for this. Um, yes. I mean the process of the Jenkins and the other things. You know we all have our own repos that have all of those in it. That's you know you just move it from the IBM version of that to the Linux Foundation version of that. But, but really the critical difference here is the labeling, that it becomes a hyperledger project, and, uh, and the licensing, and the review process. Is that, is that fair? I think, I think that's, that's fair. It's also, again, it's a process of growing uh, you know, a community, you know, part of, part of what we, you know, and, and I think that we were successful at with the hackathon was actually getting people from different companies to collaborate on, you know, various, pro ver various, you know, it's, it's, we have an elephant in the room and we're all, you know, filling it up and we all feel different parts of it. Right. And, and, but it was getting collaboration from many different members of the, the community around that now again, there can be other proposals, um, but the the important thing that we do is we start engaging and collaborating as a community, and building an understanding about what it is we're building through the requirements and the use cases working group, and working on refining you know the messaging around what it is that we're building, and then working towards actually getting code, whether it's this code or another piece of code, or this code plus other pieces of code, or you know what have you, uh, that address the you know the the requirements and use cases that we all have in mind. You know we may find indeed you know to Richard's point that it makes a lot more sense to have you know smaller things that are specifically answering or or, or addressing a particular flavor of use case um, that that may in, indeed be so right, and there, there may be better ways of delivering that than you know, what we have today, there's no doubt about that. In fact, part of the discussion that we had at the hackathon was about how we would actually, you know, go about building and delivering the actual running code, depending on what you put in as, as sort of your sorry, I want to use UTXO with this kind of chain code, da, 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 boom, and you run a build and it spits out a piece of code that does that. Um, so we had those conversations, but we have to have them as a community and not as you know, individuals or, you know, individual companies or even pairwise companies going off and, and working in in seclusion, we need to do this as a community and we, we need to learn how to do that as a community. That's part of of this this initial step. Chris, this is Christopher Allen. Um, you know, what I said in the in the go to meeting chat box and for those people who are logging in other ways, um, how about I, I'm willing to accept this proposal, uh, you know, from the proposal stage into incubation, but I would really like to see in this repo the some really, you know, in this initial repo, some clarity around that A, we're hoping for further proposals and incubation product projects, that B, just because this is the first one, it isn't a base at this time, and that C, you know, that as the first, you know, we kind of have an incomplete understanding of the goal end states and are waiving the requirements of the life cycle process that we have a, you know, a well-defined scope and a well, you know, whatever other things there because we want to get started. Um, but, you know, if that's in the document, um, so that it's clear that somebody goes straight to that uh, thing, you know, does the readme and goes, yeah, this is, you know, something that's being, you know, thrown out there for, for people to look at. Um, I'm much more willing. It just, it, there was an element of the fact that this is the first incubation and, and the language and, you know, things that kind of, again, you know, unlike other 
uh, Linux Foundation projects that have a base to start with, where everything is, you know, often a you know a fork of the of a base that you know, everybody has agreement with. This isn't. Um, so we want to be very clear and be very concrete that that uh, you know this is not a base yet. Maybe it will be. So this is on the law of sticks. Uh, I'd like to interject here. I think I have a, 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 a proposal that would address Christopher's point here. Uh, I think we're suffering, as it's been said before, by a lack of common understanding of what it implies to be in incubation. And uh, we have, Chris, Chris and I have started developing a, a proposal on defining the project life cycle for the Hyperledger project. And it's unfortunate we haven't finished this work. And it occurs to me that a lot of this discussion could have been, you know, eased up by having a, a, a proposal that has been accepted. And it's, you know, based on the discussion I heard, uh, it seems like this document needs more work because there are questions that have been raised through this discussion that are not being answered by the document. And but so I think, you know, rather than having this whole explanation about what the incubation is in each the incubation project, what we need is when the project enters the Hyperledger GitHub, there should be a clear, you know, in the readme uh, status section that says this project is incubation and there should be a link to the project lifecycle definition of what incubation is, what it means. And so what I think we need to do is finalize the work on the Hyperledger project lifecycle document, publish that on the on the website, and then as I said, put a link to it when we when we put the documents Thanks Arno. I think that's right. So so Chris to your point um, on you know sort of clearly calling out exactly what we're trying to do here. I, I I can fully appreciate that, you know, there's an awful lot of focus on this project. I mean, holy crap, the coin desk was <laughs> on the phone with uh, Mike Dolan, I think two minutes after we closed the call last Friday, <laughs> wanting to have clarity on on some things that happened. And um, and so I, I fully can appreciate that we don't want to send a signal somehow or other prematurely that, you know, the answer to life, the universe and everything is what we're proposing to incubate here. Um, and so, Chris, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, Mick, I think you're, you have some similar concerns and I, and I can appreciate them. Um, here, here's what I'd like to suggest. Um, that uh, maybe you two can collaborate on writing what you think the readme should say, um, share it in the mailing list or Slack, whichever is most expedient so we can get this done quickly, um, uh, as to exactly how we would want to characterize this. Um, does, that, does that make sense? I'll be glad um, to. I'm happy to work. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm happy to work with Chris on this. Yeah, it, Chris, this is Mike Dolan from Linux Foundation again. If I could just make a comment, you know, you guys need to think of this in the long term. You, there, there's a balance between putting up a lot of gates at the very front end of uh, community members who want to propose projects and being able to, you know, make there's something available for them to start working on and engaging on to work through some of these issues that, that are being raised. And I think you really need to look at the next stage of, you know, what does it take to get out of incubation and focus there? Because we, on the long-term side of healthy projects, they have a very healthy ecosystem and making it easy to contribute and get started on an idea is typically at the forefront of all of the ones that you know succeed over the long term because you have to have healthy debate and in order to have healthy debate you need to be able to start working on something and generate interest from others who might be able to want interested in working on the same thing and experimenting on the same thing and if you have no experimentation because the gates are too high to get started it, it's it's a very it's a very systemic long-term issue if you if you start it off that way so i would really encourage this community to focus on you know making it 
for projects, not just this one, but you know, any others, you know, if somebody wants to come along with a competing project tomorrow and they have a pretty you know, decent understanding of what they're doing and it fits in the scope of the project, why not let them work on it and try to see if they, if, if it's a worthy experiment that should move forward. Um, and that's really the way you need to start looking at this, I think. So, so Mike, that's a really good point. And I guess it's, I guess it makes the, the, the read me um, really, impor really important because the long term is important, but, it, but, we, but we need short term clarity. And I think maybe this read me and, and, and associated messaging, and this goes, I guess, for all parties who, who are, are making messaging is important because um, coming into this call, the question, uh, listening to the comments, the question I was asking myself is, um, if we as a TSC, as a broader group, were creating the impression that this code base or whichever one was in there was the first piece of clay from which everything else would, would, would follow, um, I can't explain that or, or justify that to my else. If, as I think I'm hearing, we're saying, no, it's just one proposal either for the long-term code base or as I would prefer, a long-term code base because I continue to make my point that I think there will be several correct architectures with different use cases if and this is a proposal for one of them if that's the the point we're making and therefore that 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 barrier because the, the, the people don't want to think they have to choose one or the other um, but that barrier is gone and actually people understand that there are multiple plausible architectures and this is just one of many naming will be important there so actually the name of that that sub project will, will be critical if that's the case then I think that I think that's a good outcome. Yeah, and, and the other thing, Richard, is that sometimes these incubation projects, you know, as people start working on it, it becomes, you know, obvious to the community, well, maybe we should split this up into multiple projects. I, somebody mentioned it earlier, you know, you may, you know, take a code base and start splitting it into multiple projects because there may be some sort of base level components that are, you know, more consistently reusable or you want to, you know, actually use them as the, you know, the one component that everybody is working off of, but experiment in, in other in other places. And so you, you know, sometimes we see componentization of the various code bases that are being incubated. But you know that takes something where you have a code base that you can work on. You have a workflow. You have an IP policy, and people are contributing under the terms of the IP policy that was set up. And in order to do that, you have to start somewhere. And that's that's what incubation is really about: is just giving people an opportunity to start somewhere. Mike, this is Primo speaking. I do have a question. So when I came into this call, I looked at the Hyperledge website and to my understanding, we do have a few proposals. You've got Ripple, of course, you've IBM DAH and you've got the Blockstream one. Now, what I don't understand is why now we've got the OBC, the IBM and um, DAH, which are called the incubator or an incubator. What do we need to do then for Ripple or the Elements project to become a project? Do we need to do a hackathon? Do they need to just put up documentation? Is it just a question of the README? Why are those it, not projects as well? Why are they still proposals then? Well, I'm not aware of anybody proposing. You know, those were initial, you know, statements of, uh, you know, willingness to contribute those code bases and everybody's looking at it. I think even Blockstream's been working with IBM and DAH. I don't think it's just them. Um, you know, and if Ripple wants to, you know, put forward a proposal for the Technical Steering Committee to consider, I hope you, you know, make it easy for them to, you know, suggest something that they could incubate and work on and, and hack on and see if, you know, that, you know, fits into the ultimate elements of this. And, and the other thing is, you know, you guys have a requirements committee and others who are working on, you know, looking at, you know, what does this need to address? And, you know, when you look at the use cases and requirements, you know, you, you should be evaluating, you know, what goes forward based on whether, you know, it, it does, you know, a healthy job of, of meeting the, the needs of what this community wants to address. And so there's multiple things that are going to go on in, in various stages. And, you know, I, I should hope that you be open to evaluating other proposals, even if, you know, they are competing and making it easy for, you know, others to contribute. I mean, that, that if the Linux kernel community just you know said here's the one direction we're going in and we're not going to accept patches that compete or even experiment on patches that compete uh, that would be a really damaging situation for the long-term success of that project I don't think that for my problem in any case it's not the competition it's of course that the projects will need to compete you'll have different algorithms will have different effects but this isn't just a question of a project yeah, every, every, algorithm. I, I can't figure out uh, the website actually says proposals. So as far as I'm concerned, these are in the initial stage of this life cycle. They're all proposals. 
and I can't uh, figure out how they've gone from proposal to incubator. I don't know what the process is. If we need to work on the website, so we on the website then we can do that. Um, you know, it, the, the readme, I think, was written by each of the organizations who uh, wanted to propose code. I took their I took their um, you know language and put it into the README. I didn't draft that myself, so you know that's you know, something where over time we need to you know evolve away from a README as the you know source and have a code base that people can start playing around with and interact with. And you know there's a lot of things that the community proposing this it sounds like have to do in order to make this easy for people to engage. And that's got to be job number one for them. I mean, if they can't figure that out, then it's never going to advance beyond incubation. So the, 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 the way this works in some of the other projects, and um, I thought, Chris, that we had showed this several TSC meetings ago, was showing a workflow of how you propose, how things come in. The life cycle, it's in yeah. the comments as well. Yeah. We talked about that a little bit earlier. So it, yeah. you know, the, 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 I think the short answer to the question is, put forward a proposal to the TSC like this group did, and, that gets it into the life cycle. It goes from a right. comment to an official piece of uh, uh, item running through the life cycle. Is that uh, Chris is that? I think that's fair. Yeah. I mean, in, you know, again, I think, you know, part of this, as Hart said a little bit earlier, is semantics. Um, uh, the, the proposals were, you know, we, you know, essentially there was sort of a, a call for who's got. Who's got some ideas? Who's got some code that they might want to contribute? And and that brought uh, forth a number of different things. Um, you know, IBM and Digital Assets got together because we saw some complementary things in our respective code, and we felt that it would be worthwhile to explore how we could start collaborating as opposed to trying to compete on whose code base is better to get to something that might be a little bit more acceptable to multiples to demonstrate that it's possible to actually get to a point where we can start working together on a thing. But that doesn't preclude that there are not other things that we might want to work on um, in the context of the Hyperledger project. Um, as Mike said a little bit earlier, these things are typically called incubations. Um, and it's, it's pretty clearly understood in uh, the Lynx Foundation and OpenStack and Cloud Foundry and other places that an incubating project is something that's undergoing all kinds of engineering and development. Um, it's part of the whole life cycle of producing something. Um, and it gets to a point where people think that it's ready to be birthed. And then there's a discussion about whether or not it's, it's, it's soup yet. Um, we, you know, collectively have to get to the point where we're starting to work on some things. It can be one thing, it can be many things. Ultimately, we are going to have to choose that this is where we're going to go forward with going, for, you know, going forward. But, you know, somebody may come along with a better mousetrap. You know, we may decide, well, you know what, maybe that's what we should do. And, you know, I think collectively we should all be, we should all be looking for that better mousetrap. But in the interim, we need to get actually collaborating. That's the most important part. Um, and, and so that's what we're really proposing here, is that we can start collaborating. Um, if this thing turns into something completely different, but that we're all happy with, I would be happy. I hope everybody in this, in this call would be happy. Um, we need to make this what we think it should be, collectively. Um, you know, this, this, again, I think, you know, if there are other proposals, then we should indeed bring them forward, documented using this template that Vipin had pulled together for us. Thank you. And and um, and 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 let's have another discussion like this, hopefully a little bit less, you know, contentious, and and let's bring things into incubation, and we can collaborate side by side, and we can get comfortable and familiar with them, and we can find where things seem to make sense and maybe we can actually start thinking about bringing things together as opposed to trying to be competing. Um, that, that's my hope and my vision for this is that, you know, more important that, you know, we get to the point where we're on a path 
and that can serve real value for um, our various constituencies. So that's, I guess, you know, I guess I'm hearing pretty much that we're okay, but maybe we're just a little bit stuck on some of the semantics, but um, it's eight o'clock, so we have a half an hour left, and I'd like to, I guess, put it to the TSC uh, whether or not they agree with this, and and so Todd or Phil, one of you guys want to drive a, a roll? Chris, um, um, this is Ram. Um, I think one of the things that would help is to have uh, a better understanding of the longer term track. You know, we're uh, at the use cases and requirements phase, if you will. But it'll be good to have an architectural uh, track going so that we can kind of uh, try to collaboratively and, and, and have a, a well-known group to kind of address some of those architectural options versus the requirements. Um, so maybe, uh, you know, having some kind of agreement of what that longer, tra uh, longer term track looks like and what process we will uh, take from any of the starting points. And this, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the current proposal is, uh, is a great starting point and the only one we have right now, uh, really, and how we would evolve that towards meeting that ideal end state, assuming that we can come up with that end state in the yep. architectural working group, if you will. I, I think that might help a lot in kind of uh, making sure that everybody's on board with this. Um, I don't, I think that's a great idea. You, um, you want to lead it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. Awesome. I'm happy. To, this is hard here. I'm happy to help look over architecture documents if you like as well. So you've got some others. Uh, I mean, I think so Ram, I want to thank you for, for offering to, to lead it. And, you know, just as we did with Patrick and, um, with David's, um, uh, work groups, um, what we'll, I think we should do is have you circulate a note on the mailing list and um, anybody that's interested in collaborating with Ram and, and Hart on on the architecture part of this and how, how does the architecture meet satisfy the requirements, I think that would be really awesome. So, Todd? All right, so just uh, running through the TSC members on the call. Uh, Stan? Do you agree? Uh, just so that we're clear exactly what are we looking for? Yeah, Chris, do you want to uh, just run, run through that in summary quick? Yeah, so so again, so we, we I went through their proposal and we've had a discussion. I did uh, modify it to add the feedback from Stefan that you know the initial focus should be making it accessible and easy for people to stand up and and to make contributions and engage the project improve the documentation and so forth the other point was that i added was from mick um, that the tsc will aggressively work in parallel on the incubation graduation evaluation criteria i think that's a great idea and um and uh, and that mick and christopher will collectively uh, collaborate, and again, we can do this in the mailing list, and others can contribute as well, um, to have a clear uh, section in the README that, that, that describes what this is, that this is one of potentially multiple incubation projects, uh, and so forth. Um, and, and so other than that, the, the proposal is as I originally articulated. That's an, that's an I. Thank you. All right, Tomas. Yes, I am certainly supporting the proposing. All right, thank you. Stefan. Yes. Parda. Yeah, um, I agree with the proposal. Uh, especially, I agree with the fact that um, you know we should have a little bit more documentation so that the rest of the community feel uh, more welcome to make the contributions. Um, because I think the community feels that they, they may be at a disadvantage um, because of the lack of documentation. Great. Hart. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Chris. Yes. Mick? Yes. All right, Dave? Yes. Richard? 
Uh, yeah, contingent on the um, the readme, which I say is critical. Then, then yes. Okay, great. Uh, and then Oshima-san or Emmanuel, if you're on the call. All right, I don't think they're here. So that's uh, Chris. That's nine in favor, zero abstaining, zero opposed. Awesome. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, okay, so we'll we'll move forward um, as we described. Um, uh, and so the next topic of discussion is Steve Morland um, has, has joined us. Thank you very much for getting up very early. Happy to be here. <laughs> and, um, uh, and so uh, I think we should uh, transition to a, a discussion around, uh, you know, so we, you know, we talked about, um, or you and I had a chat yesterday about tooling uh, for this and previously um, two TSC calls ago, we had a, a, a discussion around some of the tools that the Linux Foundation can help us with in terms of, um, you know, doing code reviews and so forth. Um, I thought that, uh, and again, we had a, um, uh, you know, we had a, a good conversation around, you know, the, the need for um, very, uh, very well managed review process, I think, is, is really um, uh, for for whatever it is we're building, whether it's this code base or another, um, uh, that you know, be rock solid. Um, we get a lot of eyes on everything that many eyes makes fewer bugs, obviously. Um, and and one of the tools that you brought up was Garrett, I think. Um, so um, I think it'd be worthwhile to have a conversation about, you know, can we get Garrett made as part of this? Um, incubation project proposal um, so that we have that front ending the, the actual repository so that it's essentially locked down, right? <clears throat> and then we start with the initial set of maintainers uh, going through a review process. Others can collaborate and review code patches and so forth. But maybe you could describe for us what you know the recommendation would be to, to set that up. Yeah, the, uh, the building on the conversation we had last time. Um, the, the project that you have here is obviously got lots of, of people, lots of uh, contributors, lots of folks in the code. One way to manage that, uh, certainly in very large projects, you know, Android, Chrome, you know, things like that out in the ecosystem, uh, they use Garrett to to control that and, and not not control it in a bad, bad way, control it as far as a uh, maintaining your sanity way of Making sure there's there's a stop point where everybody gets to see the same thing at the same time, comment on it, review it, and that there's a, a once that review has been done, uh, go ahead and, and hit the go button uh, where it, it's included in the code base and is part of the build and part of the build out configuration. Or or if there's further review that needs to happen, uh, all the contents, all the communication that's associated with that uh, goes back to the contributor so that they can take a look at it and, and adjust accordingly. Um, since we're coming from, uh, I got to see the, the keynote that described some of the components that you guys did at the hackathon and, and part of the conversation we had yesterday is, uh, I don't often get projects that have so many different code bases. Uh, that, that will be interesting in itself. Um, what I uh, suggested, and I would suggest to you folks, is uh, I think as a general direction, um, you know, Garrett would be the right way to do uh, control uh, and code management and, you know, code review. Um, I would also suggest that uh, as part, uh, kind of parallel to what you're doing with your uh, initiation, the proposal you just did, that we have uh, a working session on infrastructure. Uh, some of my people, I think some people volunteered at the hackathon that said, hey, we do these bills for these components now. We know what they look like. We know what they smell like. We know what keeps us up at night. Uh, that would all be really great input in with uh, some of my release engineering team to, uh, to build out a chart, uh, a straw man, if you will, of how we'd like to manage and get the continuous bills going on a regular basis, uh, including the, the code review. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, 
you know, my input, uh, my suggestion, you, you guys are the TSC, we take direction from you, so we modify it accordingly based on your wishes. So if I, so, so, so I think the recommendation and the, the use Garrett as the review uh, process flow, and that's pretty standard, right? Um, way of locking things down. Um, um, I think you're offering to have, so I think there's actually probably two, two parts to that, right? One is um, we need to have sort of people that are focused on the release engineering side of things, right? Of actually, you know, getting the build, um, working, integrating with continuous integration, integrating the test, um, you know, the testing, you know, the unit testing, the smoke test, and so forth. <clears throat> and then I think separately, probably to have a workshop, right, to exactly. get people familiar with how to use Garrett, how to use these other tools. Um, um, is that so? I think that's what you're. Those, those are the two so pieces. Two, so maybe a little face to face of people that are interested in helping. Uh, flesh first. out how, how this project generally, not, not just this incubator, but all of them exactly. would, would be managed. Um, and so it'll, it'll yeah, set that, once again, I think of it as, as setting a straw man uh, to work from, uh, that was we learn what, what's effective, what's not effective. Uh, we always find out, uh, you, you guys do this for a living too, you know how this works. There's the set of requirements you know, and then there's a set of requirements you don't know. So that straw man usually ferrets out uh, any issues associated with, well, gee, we do need this extra component, or we do need, I'm trying to think of one of them, one of the fuzzy code code checks, um, you know, sonar, you know, if there's any other requirements that are needed as part of the process. So um, part of what I'm going to do is an action item out of, out of this week, yeah, I'm going to go back and get my release engineering resources lined up. That That is part of the budget. Your budget's approved, I think. Directly? Uh, no. No, no, we haven't actually done a budget yet, right? We have for this board. We have sort. Oh, we do. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have. Oh, okay. We have a budget. Okay. okay. So, so part of that will have, you know, there'll be a release engineering block in there. That that's what that person will do. Okay. Uh, we'll get that. Um, I do have some samples. I know there were some comments in the previous conversation about documentation. Mm -hmm. uh, part of what that release engineer does produce. Uh, is, you know, those FAQs, those initial start points. Um, this is the way you get your code checked in. This is the way it gets reviewed. Uh, they are by no means technical writers, so don't mm -hmm. get your hopes up. It's going to be the best documentation on God's green earth. But it's typically very useful for, for the existing folks mm -hmm. who all have a common understanding. And also for new folks that are coming in, uh, it's not unusual to have one of my release engineers work with uh, under the direction of the team, so work with new folks that are coming in on board to kind of get them jump started and in the pipeline. Excellent. You talked about that yesterday about maybe cloning one of the lead things and or the contributing MD or whatever it Absolutely. articulates. Um, and and yeah, so we we can uh, I think that'd be a great ad addition. Um, and that that'll help also I think address Stefan's. Um, Aspect uh, attended to that though, you know, and 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 I think you know we had some of these conversations at the the hackathon um, of people who maybe not totally familiar with the um, uh, you know what was being proposed, and and then we heard a lot of discussion around some of that, and didn't really quite understand the membership services and so forth. But some of the things that I think a lot of and easy to sort of wrap our heads around is just how do you do Right. right. So how do you do a Maven build or whatever you choose to use, right? You know, just, you know, it doesn't matter what you're building. They're they're very similar. And um, a number of people came up to me and said that they'd love to get involved, but they weren't sure how. But one way to do that would be to have, you know to help collaborate on uh, on things like uh, testing, uh, you know, coming up with the build process, uh, working with the release engineer from the Linux Foundation to. Uh, to uh, running as a well-oiled machine I, and I, continuously improving it. Well, exactly. And I, I, uh, I've been through enough of these projects. This, this project has enough moving parts to where I, I think it's a, a really good thing to get that straw man built, that, that flow of what the integration flow is going to look like mm -hmm. uh, as early in the month as we can. Um, you know, I've, I've been through a couple recently where we found, uh, gee, OpenStack doesn't work that way. Uh, 
well, an architectural flaw, that's not what I wanted to find in CI land. Uh, so the earlier we can identify that, um, mm -hmm. you know, the better off we'll be. It'll just streamline the process. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to do a couple of things. My punch list looks like this. I'm going to assign a release engineer to, to represent you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming budget, budget approval will come through, so we'll all be, I'll be happy campers on that. I won't be out of bounds. Uh, secondly, if, if you could collect the names if, from you guys of yeah. the people who volu foolishly volunteered to, to work on CI from the hackathon, hopefully you wrote them down or recorded them on video so they can't deny it. I they know who they are. <laughs> uh, and we'll, we'll team those folks up. We'll, we'll come with some sample sets. Uh, we have some very large projects uh, with some very large moving parts, as Phil can attest to. Uh, so we'll have some sample sets to say, here are the way the pictures look for everybody else, you know, what's different, what, what we can do. So we'll have working samples to, to work, uh, and that will not only help uh, stabilize what everybody's conception, stabilize the terms that we're all talking about, but also uh, set that straw man for, for common discussion and collaboration as we fine tune exactly how we want to proceed with the CI portions. To some extent, it'll help set you know, your expectations on, on what a release cycle will be, mm -hmm. because yeah. it, will, it will give you that piece. Great. Okay, so I'll put out a call, um, to, and, um, and we'll, once we get a, a small team together, we'll arrange to have a face-to-face. -face. And um, I guess in the interim, we can also just start planning for the... Um, I don't see why not. Whatever, I'll, I'll work through know, Todd. Yeah. I'll work through Todd to, to uh, you know, set some milestones up. And okay. uh, once we uh, have a candidate slash victim for the release engineering component, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get that set up and okay. set those meetings. Excellent. Anybody have any thoughts? Uh, there was some chat going on. I was taking some notes from Steve, but anybody have any thoughts or comments on the, um, the tool discussion? I guess the infrastructure discussion. I right, hear anything. Um, is there anybody on the call that's interested in in working on that aspect of things, helping out with um, uh, you know working with the release engineer, building out the, the pipeline, integrating the tools, improving the contributing MD, um, and so forth. And I'll step up at once. Okay, I'll send that to the list. <laughs> Um, but you know, if, if people, you know, I mean, again, as I mentioned, this is one um, really effective way of getting involved, and it's an important, it's, it's as important as the code, frankly, in, in many regards, it's more important. I, I, I you know, when, whenever I start a new project, the first thing I focus on is the continuous integration. Chris, this is, uh, Chris, this is part of the, uh, we'll be interested in um, yeah, working on this part, aspect of the project. Oh, excellent, excellent. All right, so I'll send out a, uh, a request to the list, and if you've got some names, um, okay, please uh, please uh, add them to the list, and and we'll we'll get things scheduled. I think I've got somebody from from the IBM team. Good. Um, awesome. Um, any other comments, thoughts, questions, concerns? Um, I think um, so. The other, I guess, the other. So that's really we're sort of putting together a release work group, if you will. <coughs> Um, the other thing I think we have to start uh, working aggressively towards that we just agreed previously is the whole sort of exit criteria, evaluation criteria, whatever you want to call it. Um, um, I'd be interested in somebody stepping forward and helping to lead that effort of pulling that together. Which process are you talking about? So one of the things that I added to the proposal was that the TSC would aggressively, you know, per, per, per mix request, basically aggressively start working on clearly identifying what is our evaluation criteria for mm -hmm. advancing something from incubation to mature mm -hmm. um, release. Um, and I, I, I think that's a good thing to do. I'd just like somebody to help lead that. I would have done 
I'm sorry, Mick, was that you? Sorry, I w- I, yeah, this is Mick. Sorry, I was just going to say I would expect that to come out of at, at least part of that, a substantial part of that to come out of the requirements group. So um, I can talk to Pat Holmes about um, about what it would take to at least um, ensure that that piece of that deliverable was met from there. Okay, all right. Um, I put out a call on the mailing list and also at the at the last um, at the end of the of the meeting in New York about an identity subgroup and I got about eight or nine members that were interested in it and all we really wanted to do for now was I'm not sure if it's a BOF or a working group or if we even know what the difference is but um, uh, there was enough interest in it that it's I think it's worthy of a mailing list and um, you know, uh, moving forward on that because it's it's related, but it may be a different you know it's it may feed into architecture, it may feed into a variety of different places. So, Phil or or, or Mike, if you're still on, um, what I mean, because right now we haven't really started new mailing lists, right? We're trying to sort of keep it all in the technical um, uh, mailing list, um, and I think the initial thought was we would do that until. People started to say uncle <laughs> in terms of the volume of stuff in their inbox and there are various strategies that we can uh, you know obviously you know we can use tagging in the subject line for people to write filters if they want to filter out what they think of uh, is spam um, I, I'd be interested just to you know from Phil or, or Mike or or Todd you know what what's the bar for, for starting a new list because I guess my concern would be we would start getting a little bit too fragmented too soon, right? And we're still trying to come together. Um, you know, would it make more sense just to have a set of tags that we could use in the in the subject to identify this is identity, this is requirements, this is uh, one, of my, one of my other projects has a it chooses a fine grained mailing list process. Wow. Yeah. Where, where, where hey, top, topics get mailing lists, kind of big topical areas get mailing lists. There are a lot of mailing lists, and we probably have 20 mailing lists. Yeah, easy. Yeah. So for me, it's complicated because I now follow 20 mailing lists. And on the other side, it's easy because they're threaded and you can enter them and go back through all Catch up. So I think that's really more a matter of how this community wants to be. One of the other projects I'm on has a single mailing list. So. What would be people's preferences? So let's just sort of have a real quick five minute discussion on do we want to have a fine grain mail list or one? So I think setting up a mailing list is not a big deal, right? Just 20 seconds. Yeah. All right. yeah. um, this is Christopher Allen. I, I, I'm quite open to setting some bar for subgroups. Um, you know, whether or not it's there's, you know, 10 people who want to be involved or what you say it needs to be 20 or or whatever, or, you know, like you said, you know, it gets noisy in the list. I just know in particular on, uh, you know, identity and architecture discussions um, that, you know, both of those are the kinds of things that can kind of go a little bit more further afield. Um, and uh, you know may not be the best thing for the main technical discussion, but um, you know they both have uh, different audiences. Thank you. Other thoughts? Just one comment. This is Arno. Uh, I think too many lists. The problem is people copy all the lists or several lists. We already have two, and most messages are sent to both lists. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and then of course we do have Slack, and so everybody. And and again, uh, I think somebody asked me. I can't remember who it was. Can I set up a Slack channel? Anybody can set up a Slack channel, and please do. You know, just don't make it private. Just, make, just make them public. Yeah, make them public. That's right. <laughs> and obviously, you can have private chats with another individual, um, but we should keep all of the, uh, if you will, the broader conversations at, uh, fully transparent and public. Um, but. Uh, so that there is that as well. Um, uh, How many of the people here can't do oh, Slack, oh. Slack? Because I I know some companies won't let you will not let you use Slack. Some companies won't let you use Slack. How many? Is 
is that a problem for Blockstream or? No, it's not a problem for oh. Blockstream. Yeah, yeah I, 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 we've had problems I, I, with I collaborations before. Yeah, I haven't run into. Uh, we've got quite a few on uh, quite a cross section of companies now. I haven't run into that problem with Slack, but if if you've got someone that has, let me know. Yeah. Uh, is that always, you know, tip of the iceberg kind of thing? Well, we've talked about this, and I think actually, you know, one of the things we may want to explore as well is just the integration of Slack with IRC and so forth. And, you know, if you can't get Slack, some people can just do IRC, and we can bridge the two. Uh, it just goes a little bit more complicated because you can only really bridge, you know, sort of channel by channel. Um, but um, we can certainly look at that as well if it does become a problem. Um, so. Uh, just to, uh, Chris or Steve, I'm not sure that was just speaking, but um, this is Mike again. I think we also have uh, the IT team working on Slack and mailing list integration. So maybe you can confirm if that's there is a project. There is a project active looking looking at uh, doing that. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, Chris, I, I don't have a problem then of setting it up, and it'd be a worthwhile experiment. It's, Add an identity mailing list. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I will get it done. Thanks, Chris. Can you, um, Chris? Can you just? Uh, I'll sync with you offline to get the details of all the participants. All right. I, I guess that's it. If there are no other topics. I guess we can be adjourned. And I want to thank everybody, um, especially those of you who got up early this morning to flip down to the to the conference room. It was good to see everybody in here. Um, and so uh, let's let's adjourn, and then uh, we'll talk to you all next week, if not before. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.